make you think music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Heidi selects all out of the friend zone. Hello, America. This is Out of the Friend Zone. I'm Heidi Selexa. It's a show to help men get the girl. Because let's admit it, sometimes they need a little help. <laughs> oh, did I? Yes, she did. I did say that. Mm-hmm. Sister knows what she's talking about. That's right. Mm-hmm. I know. Let me tell you what he did the other day. Thank you for excusing me in my absence the last few weeks. I had carbon monoxide poisoning. It was real fun, apparently. That's I don't one way remember. to get a girl. What was that? Did That's you? one way to get the girl. It, just, just poison him with the carbon there monoxide. There you go. And... Just, you know, I passed out. I passed out. I passed out. It was really scary. Um, and, and I was wondering why for a year and a half I wasn't feeling right. And my, my, my gas stove had been leaking. And, uh, you know, I didn't blow up, which is good, which means I have angels. Apparently, I've got a few. <laughs> I always keep my windows open because sometimes I light candles and other things. <laughs> you need to have the windows open. So I'm lucky with that. But anyway, so then I figured out, wow, why are certain things in my house eaten to shreds? For example, <clears throat> I have a studio in my house, a, a radio studio. I do a, another national radio show out of there, and I do voiceovers. Um, so I went to do a show and nobody could hear me. I went to look at the cord. It had been eaten through. <gasps> oh my gosh. Who's nibbling on my cord? The headphone cord had been eaten through and it was brand new, right? You know, those really expensive Sony ones that you just love. You know, you guys are musicians. I brought the rock stars in by the way, girls. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and they're single. Oh, did I just say that? Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. She know what she's talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so anyway, so it ate my things and then it ate through the vacuum cord. Oh my God. Okay. I'm a germaphobe. I vacuum three times a day. I'm really clean and there's no way a little creature could be in my house. A mouse was in my house. Okay. So I went to pull out my rock star pants today so I could mesh with my guest. <laughs> Willie Nelson was going to sign him, but well, something got in the way. Um, and it, it ate through my pants, you guys. So as I'm walking down the street, it's ripping more. But when I pulled them out, I'm like, what was that? There's little teeth marks on my pants. Oh, my God. I haven't worn these in years. Who was eating through my pants, okay? So it just ate everything. I'm sure it ate through the gas stove. I got carbon monoxide poisoning, and I needed to have a few weeks to myself. I also got really depressed. And I didn't know that the si that's a side effect of, of gas and carbon monoxide. But apparently the gas company man said, you're not going to die from gas because it, you know, you're just going to breathe it in and eventually it'll go away. There's no permanent damage. <laughs> okay, what about the year and a half you don't remember things? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? And then he kept trying to calm me down and then asked for my telephone number. That was creepy. First of all, I wouldn't date a gas man who was trying to make it like I was crazy and lying. And I wasn't crazy. I just couldn't remember. Maybe I was crazy. I don't know. Anyway, so thank you so much for excusing me in my absence. I'm back, though, and I'm alive, and I'm well, and I'm just alert. I went to the sweat lodge. Have you ever been to the sweat lodge on the boulevard? Don't say what boulevard we live on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't say. Have you ever, you know, where you go into the infrared sauna, and it's like 500 degrees, and no, you no, sweat? No, I, I haven't been to that that one but no. you've seen it though right yeah yeah i know what you're talking yeah the about. shape house yeah 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 right but i prefer to go to a real spa and go into the steam room you know that's my thing yeah do you go to one where you're all naked oh yeah girls you have to be which one What's do you point? go to <laughs> 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 this is so fun. Um, so, um, yeah, and then I went into the freezing ice. Um, it's like it's called the Cairo something where you go in and you freeze. Basically, this is all to, like, get rid of toxins, and I figured that's what I had. That's the old Norwegian trick. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah, you go into the, into the sauna, and uh -huh. then you run out and roll in the snow, and then jump into the heated pool. Oh. Okay, and that seems like that's part of the same process. Oh, wow, I had no idea. Yeah, we used to do that up in the mountains when we were teenagers here. Just for fun, or was it when you were hungover? Because uh, that no, I hear that works. So it was because we were crazy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Where did you grow up in the snow? No, I didn't. We just go up to Mammoth Mountain, go skiing. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, I did yeah. that. You ran around naked in the snow, girls. <laughs> I got some fun rock stars here. And oh, I we have more them. interesting stories in there. Oh yeah, we're gonna hear them. <laughs> I'd like to introduce fabulous band. It, they're called Ben Ray, and I know you think he looks like somebody. Photo, please. 
<laughs> right? Hello, Ven. And we've got his um, really talented and hot. By the way, I like your jeans, Jason. Well, thank you. Just a little. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah. So, gosh, you guys, thank you for coming on the show. And I'm just blabbing about my, you know, welcoming me back. Not that anyone else cares. Um, but, <laughs> but thank you so much because I was listening to your new album, which is going to be released next Friday, the 24th. Correct. And I, it, it's, I would like to call it male, adult male. I'm not angry, but I'm sexy and I'm a little frustrated. Rock music. <laughs> um, and I, I do, right. Am, am, am I kind of close? I mean, it, you're, you're hard. Yeah. We won't go there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's one song, it's sexy. I was like, you know, I worked out to it. Um, but, I mean, your music is really great. And actually, I listened to the whole album. Um, and I did my workout video to it. I brought it to show you. I'm glad you enjoy it. You know, yeah. Jason <clears throat> writes all the music and produces our music. And I, I write the lyrics. And, uh, and we've been writing songs together now for almost six years. So we're proud of this body of work. I really, really think Jason's designed the Ven Ray sound, and I think uh, the new album, Children of the Drones, yes, is um, you know kind of a full circle new album for us. And that's uh, coming out next Friday, the twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. um, I've brought these guys on the show because two nights ago I just was strolling around the boulevard um, after my jog, and I went into the organic yogurt shop. And I ran into another one of your band members. That's correct. And I just looked at him, and he was shy. I don't know if you know it. Right? He's yeah. really shy. You must have yeah. caught him off guard. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. No, he is kind of shy. He's kind of shy. But I knew I knew he was a musician, mm -hmm. and I just thought, hi, just go say something to him. Because I thought, I want to get really cool people on the show to help men understand you know, what they need to do to be cool. Not that you're not cool, but if you're having a, a hard time getting the girl you want or getting something, you know, these guys know how to do it. So, you know, rock stars are known for just getting it done, getting her done. And so I thought I'd bring them on. So I walked and I said, and we were getting yogurt. And you know what was funny was you could tell the guy, he was getting like some organic drink, like some green, uh, you know, mm -hmm. with, with, you know, cilantro and, you know, cayenne. He knew exactly what he wanted. And, and he sat there very patiently and he was very calm. And I thought, this guy is really cool. And I saw him look at me and I was wearing my like my orange workout jacket so I don't get hit by a car at night. And my, <laughs> that's right. You, know, you know, you got to, And I have like my light. That's on. a good reason to wear one. <laughs> yeah. And so I walked up and I said, are you a musician? And he goes, yes. <laughs> And that's all, and he went, yes. And then he got really close, and I said, oh. And he goes, do you know Ven Ray? And I said, I'm sorry, who? Because he talks so soft. And then I said, oh yeah, you know, I've heard of them. And um, he goes, yes, I will have the singer call you. <laughs> and it was so funny. And then I said, where are you from? Because I knew he had an accent. He goes, from Italy. But I live in, I live in England, but I live down the street. And then I was like, oh my God, this is so funny. And, and then he was so excited. And then he like touched me. It was really cute. I thought he was going to do the double kiss, you know, that Italians yeah, do. Yeah. And I have to give him eight out of 10 stars because um, he was very calm. He was patient. He looked sexy. He wasn't aggressive. He wasn't uh, creepy or anything like that. He was a gentleman. He wasn't too touchy feely. But however, he didn't come talk to me first. His eyes did. Mm -hmm. So there's, I'm only going to knock two points out of 10. I don't know where I came up with that star system, but well, that's Heidi's well, system. What's the difference <clears throat> between American men staring at you and Italian men being an American woman? Italian men? Because now you've experienced both. Right. Well, I have a little Italian in me. So. And <laughs> okay. Japan and peu français. <laughs> I'm just uh, curious. Yeah. I think Italian men are, um, well, you know, they're really charming. <laughs> until you get your cute girlfriend around. Um, but I think they're more, they're just more honest. And American men, I think they look at you, but they don't say, hey baby, what you, you know what I mean? They don't, not that you want that. You don't want that either. Uh, don't do that. Don't go chasing her. Hey, yeah, what's up mama? You know, or mommy. I get that a lot. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm not a mommy, but apparently, you know, they want me to be a mommy for their kid. So um, I'm just saying there's something that was really gentle about him and it was really cool. And I noticed it with you and you, Jason. Do you see how calm you guys are? <laughs> right? You guys are really yeah. calm. Well, Nico's a beautiful spirit. Yeah. yeah. He's a, a great bass player and uh, a tremendous uh, engineer, mixing engineer, and he brings a lot to the table and a lot to the band. He's new to the band. 
-hmm. Our original bass player, Michael Bradford, is just uh, an incredible player, too. Grew up in Jackson, Mississippi with Jason and was, was with us for the first two albums and all our tours up until the last tour. Yeah. But unfortunately had some family issues and can't tour with us this year. And uh, Nico had lived near Jason and we've not all known each other for a couple of years. So he was the natural choice to bring right. in, uh, you know, to be the new player. And he's just a, an amazing, uh, gentle soul and a great person. Yeah, I noticed that. I wasn't afraid to talk to him. I knew if I had talked to him that he wouldn't follow me down the street later. And that was a no. good... No, he wouldn't. No, he's definitely not creepy. He's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he didn't even come today. You know, I, I just said, bring Nico. <laughs> but, we, we invited him, but he's having some insomnia the last few days. So oh. I think he, uh, uh, he was just too tired. He needs to go get a massage. Maybe. Um, Something you can text him that. No, well, <laughs> see, I'm afraid to do that with him because I even put a smiley face, you know, one of these emojis, and uh -huh. he didn't do it back. And I thought, oh boy, don't go there with him. He's you could tell he's not. He's well, he's very... having a hard time texting oh. in English, you know. Oh, is that it? Well, yeah, it's the spelling and all that isn't quite right all the time, so he's sensitive to that. He should just say, you know, I speak only a little English, and we'll be like, <laughs> really, where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> and then we're thinking, we're thinking that we're gonna run off and marry him and run off in the Italian Alps or something in the green grass and roll around. No, you the know. girls love Nico. They yeah. Really well, he's because he's so sweet. Yeah, he's really sweet. They, they they love him. And then, you know, our drummer, Ed Davis. You know. Yeah. Well, the, so all the women love the band. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is my point. Uh, but just so people have a history of, of who you are, mm -hmm. um, you have toured with Alice Cooper. And, um, well, you just tell me, everyone, that, you know, I know you've toured with Alice Cooper, the Ramones. Let's see. Um, you're going. There's been so many. Well, we've toured, you know. Slash. Yeah. Tell them what we've done. Got L.A. Guns. Uh, Slash. Fuel. Fuel. Alice Cooper. A hardcore superstar. Great band. Out Buck of, Cherry. Uh, yeah, out of Sweden. They're really good. Yeah. yeah. Now, we're about to go out with uh, punk rock legend uh, Richie Ramone. And we leave on May 18th. I love him. We saw him last night. They were at Los I Lobos. invited myself. <laughs> I tried to get you in. It's but. fine. I, it was the last, it was like an hour before the show. Leave it to me to wait till the last minute. And I really couldn't go. Mm -hmm. But I thought I would try just in case, you know, something would open up. But I really couldn't. So. Well, we, we leave on May 18th. We, yeah. go to, we, we go and do some shows in Spain. And then, you know, return to uh, the United Kingdom and play some more shows there. Including the Camden Rock Festival on May 30th in Camden. Hey, we're having a giveaway for free tickets. So if any of uh, our oh, fans yeah, 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 yeah. in England want to go, go to facebook.com forward slash Venray, V E N R E Z, like the post to win free tickets, and you'll be entered in the contest. Yay, yeah. Let me ask you guys a question. As hot rock stars and, you know, famous, um, do. American women behave differently than than women in Spain or other countries. This is this is, and and what is attractive about American women or not, as opposed to Spanish women, or French women, or maybe in you know the Swedish. That's a Amer lot of questions. American women are very interesting because we're all mutts, you know, of of you know mostly. Mostly European, but all kinds of descent. You know, so mutts, sometimes different. we act it's like a, we're French and then Italian. One, and then quite the next a, well, I'm just talking visually okay. at this moment. <laughs> oh, you, yeah. mean like, you know, we have Swedish meatballs in one area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a bag wet in another. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's 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 interesting going to a place like Spain where, where everyone has a much more uniform kind of, a, kind of a look about them, you know. And European women just in general are a little bit. More I don't want. I don't want to say. Aggressive? I don't want to say loose, but they're definitely not as uptight in general as oh, Americans. Really? You know? So yeah. what, what does that mean? Because I've always um, thought groupies and well, the girls that I've seen. Um, you know, I've been on the radio a lot, and I've you know toured with musicians, introducing them on stage and stuff like Kevin Cronin and and uh, you know Cinderella and you know the rockers like you and I feel like the girls that I've seen in the front row are just as loose as for example the European women but are you saying that are is it a different kind of loose or are they classier about their yeah looseness? I think I think culturally I'm just trying to figure um, this out. <laughs> you know European people live in very close quarters to people that speak completely different languages, completely different cultures that are all very close to one another, mm -hmm. you know, so they're a little bit more worldly, 
you know, in the way that they see things yeah, and the way they I, understand yeah, things. Yeah, right. If yeah. that makes sense. I, well, but I, if it, what you're talking about, just the traditional like chick that's going to throw a bra on the stage, that girl exists all over the world. <laughs> and it's the same girl. Okay, it's the same girl yeah. that just kind of rotates in the different countries. No, different I, I think the biggest difference between American women She's and, on tour. Amer- <laughs> American women and European women that I've, I've discovered is, um, you know, the freedoms and the convenience that we have in our country is taken for granted, so, so to speak. And right. uh, I, I find the women much more advanced and mature overseas. In other words, like yes, you know, I will a, agree. A nineteen or twenty-year-old Eastern European woman is the equivalent of a twenty-eight-year-old American woman. Uh, you know, that's, that's what true, I found. Yeah. They're a little bit more sophisticated. A little bit, uh, you know, they they seem to espouse their their education. They're a little more comfortable. Bit more, the younger ones, right. so to speak. You know, but American America is a great country, and the women here are amazing women but i think they mature a little bit slower uh, than europe yeah i wonder why that is because when i went to norway um 15 year olds it was very normal for them to smoke and hang out with their parents smoke cigarettes like where i grew up we were we, you couldn't smoke cigarettes in front of your parents like that was bad but um well i mean let me put it to you this way um in our country you can go to iraq or afghanistan and die in the armed forces Mm. at the age of 18 that's true but you can't walk into a bar and buy a beer or see a band you like in a 21 only club so that, i think that says it all about mm-hmm. our puritanical society and europe's much different than that yeah and i i do feel like they're more honest um i feel like if they are going to you know hook up with a rock star not that you know that's always the right thing to do but if for example she's not going to get clingy and expect you to call her the next day am i right on that <laughs> i know I'm just, i mean that's just from what i this may be just heidi's vision of things mm-hmm. but from what i've seen with you know european people in general they're normally not as clingy well that that's true they're they seem to be um, a little bit more respectful. Uh, you know, for, it depends on who we're touring with. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, for the, if we're out with Alice Cooper, you know, we're rolling in a bus into the back of an <laughs> arena, you know, with security gates closed. I mean, no one really gets near us. You know, if you're doing a club tour where they can get closer yeah. to you. But everybody's pretty respectful in America. Uh, and, and and overseas, I don't I don't really find this this groupy thing to be you know what it's all made out to be yeah i mean but you do have people where you're just thinking that you're just hanging out with each other and then all of a sudden you know there's a blonde around the corner saying hi and you're like where'd she come from i mean like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the engineer here gets what i'm saying i mean i know you guys get what i'm saying but mm-hmm. i've seen it like when i've been on tour buses and i wasn't the groupie girl mm-hmm. however some of the wives may have thought <laughs> No, I was really doing my job, okay? Whatever. Well, I mean, you know, you know, being on tour is a completely different story. <laughs> you know, you think we've just had a hot shower and dinner and all, life is great like you, you know. You don't know that we were in a coma 30 minutes before the lights went on. <laughs> you know, about a week into it, you don't know where you are, where you've been, or where you're going. And uh, yeah. when we come off stage, we're kind of more interested in, like, bailing to our hotel or bunks and going don't to you guys, sleep. You guys get sick of each other, don't you? Because if, you, if you've been around each other too much... You may just, you know, you're super great friends and all, and you get along, but you need your space. Is is that right? Yeah, it's pretty yeah, interesting, you, isn't you it? You can get yeah. like that. But, I mean, you know, you, you just have to be respectful of one another and, yeah. and you know, I mean, there, and just know that there is no personal space while the yeah. tour is happening. There mean? really, there really yeah. isn't. Yeah, I mean, we've been touring together for five years, going on six, and I guess we're lucky. Well, because Jason and Ed, Ed Davis is our drummer, mm-hmm. Jason Walmack were in Juliet Lewis and the Licks for a number of years. So they had toured all over the world a lot yeah. together and were roommates. You know, so besides bringing that chemistry into the band, you can't buy that kind of chemistry. Right. Uh, they were roommates and had toured together. And we were pretty lucky. I mean, for the most part, you know, from the first tour on, we all got along real well and learned how to respect each other's space. And it's never really been an issue uh, for this band. Lucky. Yeah. Well, I'd like to hear um, one of your songs that you can. Can we do one of the songs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want something live or you're going to play something recorded? Um, what you know what? Let's do the music video first. Would you guys like to do the music video? Yeah. The new the single has been released. Hang the Predator. Yep. The and music video is directed by Nick Cage's brother, Christopher Coppola, Francis Ford's nephews. Yay. And how did you say he was 19? Well, um, the 
there's two kids that star in the video. Uh, the the brunette with the beard is uh, Bailey Coppola. That's uh, Christopher Coppola's son. Uh, he's the next James Dean. He looks a little he's bit cute. like his uncle, Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Uh, but you'll see him in the video. The band is not in it. I didn't want to be in this video. <clears throat> and it was shot in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and in the country of Belize. And um, I think Christopher did a great job of directing it. So enjoy it. Yay. Play it. Yeah, let's play it. Oh. 
I like it. I'm glad you do. Children of the Drones. And you know what? When I saw that uh, last night when you sent it over, I was like, wow, he looks like Nicolas Cage. And I wasn't aware mm-hmm. at first that that was his nephew. Yeah, that's Nicolas Cage is, his, is Bailey's uncle. I'm still playing the video. <laughs> I'm totally going against the engineer in the network because uh, I like uh, it. Well, that's the single Hang the Predator from the album, Children of the Drones. So it's really, I mean, it's it's super, I, I was asking you during the, the video, like you write a lot, I mean, a lot of it is politics, but but not all of it is politics. Well, no, there's only two songs on this album that are kind of politically charged. You know, and I usually take one or two shots per album because <clears throat> mm-hmm. I feel I need to. You know, Hang the Predator, you know, is definitely, you know... Yeah, I was going to ask you what 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 exactly does where how did that like how did you come up with that and exactly what does that well, mean? Well, you know what? Because we all know story. what predators why you, why mean. Why don't you tell her the story? Yeah, about I want to know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting story, but Jason. Yeah, I had I had an old iPhone that that I had dropped and cracked a few years ago, and hadn't used since. It had just been in a drawer, and so I pulled it out and charged it up just to see if there was anything interesting on there. Sometimes I'll do little voice memos if I have ideas for a right. song or something like that. And so I came across these lyrics that he had sent me mm-hmm. a couple of years ago that I didn't remember. And so I texted him. I was like, do you remember sending me lyrics of something called Hang the Predator? And he was looked on his computer and he was like, no, I don't have this. So it was just something that I guess he had emailed me one day. And wow. I must have just seen and sort of moved on to something else and so I was like, these are really cool lyrics. You got to check this out. So I wrote this song to it, and uh, it was it was that close to just being lost forever to just to to a dead phone. How? Yeah, and it became uh, the single to the album. You know what happened is that's like, so bizarre that you like you wouldn't even. Think well, you of know what happens that. is like if I'm home, I'm writing on my computer, mm-hmm. and I save it in a Word document, and I email it to him and CC myself, and I save it into a file. But if we're on the road. <clears throat> excuse me, I have an iPhone, right? So I use the notepad. And then I usually immediately text and email it to him and then I email it to myself and save it. But this time I just forgot. I was probably in a tour bus, you know, rolling down the road when I wrote it. So I'd written it a couple of years before. And, you know, I think it's uh, one of the better songs we've done together. Well, I like it. I like the video too. I think the video is like, I would watch that video uh, a lot. I'm glad you do. I just gave 100% faith Not, and confidence to Coppola. I yeah. just said, he goes, well, I want you to be the predator. I'm like, I don't want to be in it. You know, I, we've been in the last three videos, me or, or the band. I'm like, you know, go ahead and just do whatever you want to do and let me know what is done. And uh, I think he really did a good job with it. He did a great job with it. You have a very interesting story. Not everyone knows your story. Mm-hmm. You've produced a lot of uh, films and a lot of projects. Mm-hmm. Um, that was your first. I love the story where you just you, you never you, you always loved music and you were in it when you were young. And then mm-hmm. you went into film producing and then you decided, well, you didn't decide. Somebody heard you. Mm-hmm. That's true. So, yeah, yeah. so what? tell the story. Well, I mean, uh, music's always been in my blood, you know. I mean, I'm older than I look, and, you know, I'm really a child of the 70s. You know, I look like I'm 40, but I'm 60. So it's kind of a, a real inspirational story to people who feel that they've missed out. You know, it's like never yeah, too late. Like I'm it's living, never too late. I'm living proof of it. I had a band, you know, we formed a band at 18. Mm-hmm. It was really good. <clears throat> a bunch of rich Encino kids. In the San Fernando Valley. And that's where you, is that where you grew up? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Up in Encino. And they all flaked out after like eight weeks. And it's not Liverpool where there's a, (laughs) you can go find a whole bunch of people to play with. So I just figured it was over and walked away from the whole thing. You know, flash forward 38 years later, I used to jam and sing karaoke to a PA system in my house for about an hour for a workout. And a producer friend of mine I've known for 20 years who didn't know I could sing. I kind of kept it secret. I had slipped into my house to pick something up, and you know, I felt his presence, and he's like, damn, I didn't know you could sing like that. And you know, Let's go to the studio and make a record. I'm like, no, I'm too old, blah, 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 blah. Needless to say, uh, uh, you know, a good friend of both of ours, uh, a great singer-songwriter, uh, Tommy Joho Johnson, uh, who had known Jason for a number of years, introduced us, and... Um, 
you know, the rest is history. I mean, we just started writing songs and recording, and the next thing I knew, you know, I had a band, a record, and we were touring. So when you st when you had the band, when you were a teenager, and then you, you know, it, d nobody, you didn't even think twice about perhaps maybe getting new members, or like during that 38-year period, were you, did you think back? Oh my gosh, was there always an instinct, like, I really want to do this? Also, like, my life's not complete. I just don't think I really believed in myself, although I really loved it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, it, was, it, it was just, I, I came from a very uptight home, uh, and it just didn't seem like a lucrative way to continue. And, uh, you know, being the Jewish firstborn son of a cardiologist in right. Encino. And then you're like, it just I'm going to be a an rock option. star. Yeah. It, it wasn't an option. <laughs> right. Although, you know, my dad's 88 now. My mom is 78. And she came to a show we did at the Roxy a couple of years ago. And, and she was and it jamming was really, out. He's really proud of me and he loves oh, it. Oh, good. Yeah, if I would have told him that when I was 19, he would have disowned me. Wow. <laughs> but it just shows you the difference in how society progresses. Right. Know? And you know what? It's funny because people have gifts. And sometimes it's not the same gifts that our family has or that they understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, growing up, though, did you feel that you were a cool kid or did you feel that you were well, what were you like growing up? Well, I think, um, you know, men go through ugly duckling and more, you know, attractive stages of their lives. See, women, we yeah. don't know this. This yeah. is this is really I think like from this. 13 to like 18 were pretty awkward, you know, and then. You get into your early 20s and you become a little bit more beautiful. Then you get more awkward. 30s are totally awkward. I think, you know, when you hit about 40 to 42, that's when you, know, you really start warming up. Okay, because just from my point of view, looking at both of you guys, I look at you as very attractive men. Well, I, I look you. at you as creative, artistic men. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you played football growing up or sports, and that's not necessarily... Uh, important, but I look at you as men who take care of yourself. I look at you as you know established people, and I look at you as sexy men. And these are what most quality women love. These qualities, as a matter of fact, if you put you next to like a big burly football player, <laughs> you know you you've got like you know I don't know over fifty, sixty, seventy percent more of a chance of getting <laughs> the girl. Uh, for lots of reasons. Um, maybe that's just my taste. You mm. know, I've been around musicians my whole life, too. So, But my brothers are, you know, athletes. I'm well, I think athletic. you need a little bit more than that. I mean, Jason <laughs> Yeah. Jason and I are both last week of January Aquarians. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Libra. I'm, that's where we get along that's right. so well. I'm January 21st, Yay. and Jason's January 30th. So I'm a three in numer numerology, and so is he. We write a lot of really good songs together, but we're really kind of you intellectual kind of guys. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? I think, you know, you have to have some game. You have to be intelligent. You need to be interesting, not just good looking, uh, well, so to speak. Well, and that, that's a huge quality. You know, you can date somebody that's extremely pretty on the outside, but there's nothing on the inside. And that's just so, there's nothing there. It, it's unattractive after a week. Well, I think what women really want is uh, someone who listens and really cares, you know. It I mean, makes them feel good. You can really learn. Mm -hmm. you know, if, you, if you really want to have great relationships with women, uh, you really need to learn how they think and feel. And uh, when they talk about their feelings, don't talk about yours. Only talk about what you think. Yeah, you listen. Know? Listen. Yeah, you, you really have to. And don't always try to fix uh, like fix the problem because we it's not that we, we want you to fix the problem. It's that we just want you to listen and just, you know, maybe understand or just sympathize well just understand it yeah. you know the mothers are not teaching their sons so the girl the women have to teach their men yeah and that's difficult that's why we <laughs> like that's why we like guy friends <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i bet you know yeah. i bet that might that might be the case you know is this what you tell your daughters uh no <laughs> but if they're if they're listening to the show they just heard it <laughs> yeah. and they probably are <laughs> You know, your dad's great, and he just, he's going for the cool factor. <laughs> it's really all it is. <laughs> he didn't mean it. So what about you, Jason? What were you like growing up? And I, I hate was... to, I hate to, dw I like to hate to dig, but the reason why I'm asking this is because there's a lot of um, men out there who maybe don't feel like they're in a position in their life at, they're in an awkward stage, and they're, they're unhappy, and they're alone, and they're like, what is it? You know, what, what's, why is it not going right with her? I try to tell them, but sometimes it's better to have you, you know, cool rock stars tell them, too. Mm -hmm. Just beat it in their head. 
um, you know, Jason, I would imagine you were a pretty good kid. As, I bet you were a good student. You got I'm, good I'm actually going to go bail to the men's room and let him talk without me. <laughs> what, you don't want to hear this a thousand times? No, I, really, I got to go to the men's room. <laughs> okay, go out the door. <laughs> And then go. <laughs> See, how many times have you seen this on a, on a radio show? What? Go out the door <laughs> and go where the uh, ladies' room. No, I'll, I'm, I'm go, I always go to the, to the ladies' room. Do you really? Yeah, I do. That's Before rude. you answer this question, I'll tell you Why? a story. Okay. We did our first tour with LA Guns to Europe in 2010. Our last tour, right, to Europe was November 2013 with Buck Cherry. And we just played <laughs> Alcatraz in Milan. True story. He was with me. Uh-huh. And we come out at 2.30 in the morning to get on the bus. You remember that? And the two, these two kind of attractive Italian girls are out front. And, <laughs> and they're like, come in the ladies' and room. And one of them keeps smiling at me. You know, like Jason and I walk up and start talking to him. And like one of them looks at me. And she says, I know you. <laughs> I said, really? And she goes, yeah, I saw you when you were here with LA Guns in 2010 in Turin. And I said, oh, so you just saw us tonight? She said, yes. And I said, great. She goes, and she said, yeah, you were in the women's room at the club. And, oh, my God. <laughs> and you were, you were drunk, and I helped you out. You know what I mean? So. Um, now you feel if you're ever drunk and you need help, just go to the ladies' oh, room. Oh, I was so embarrassed. You were know you? what I mean? I just yeah. kind of like walked away and went on the bus. And the next morning, I had a Facebook friends request from her. So I guess, <laughs> you know, rock star. <laughs> I can't See, say I'm a rock star because the fans have to, but guys in rock and roll, I guess we can't do any wrong. But I just had to say that story because that was so funny. But yeah, now I, you I'll be right back. He's, Jason's just go to the here. ladies' room. <laughs> we go to the men's room when there's a line in the ladies' room, as long as it's clean. It has to be clean. So, Jason. Well, the ladies' room is generally cleaner than the men's room. I think that's probably one of the big draw. Yeah. You know what's funny is that you guys don't spend as much time in there, yet it's dirtier. Yeah. You know, we've we're we're doing our hair and our lipstick. We're like, how do I look? And do you have this? And then we're looking at the girl next day. You know, who she's drunk and throwing up, and then the other girl's fighting. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that goes on. And then you actually do talk to people, even if you don't know them. You know, you have a meeting in the ladies' room, shall we say? Really? <laughs> yeah, you do. See, oh. that doesn't that doesn't go down in the men's room. It's you guys don't talk. Do you guys even look? Uh, no, you Ooh, try. You that? try not to. Really? Yeah. Do you uh, do you ever get curious? See, I would be like. Mm, I do remember seeing like the couple of uncircumcised kids really? uh, growing up. Though. Let I, me uh, look. <laughs> yeah. What really? You saw uncircumcised? Is that yeah. the first time you saw it was in the men's room? Yes. I thought it looked like a. Sh uh, uh, See, I just revealed some serious information about myself. There, you know what I? you did, and I didn't want to go there. You are straight, <laughs> yeah. and even if you're not, that was sexy. No, it's a little crooked. Actually, I did but. think that it was like a Charmaine puppy face when i saw one one time really my, my mother was my junior high sex ed teacher and i remember that's awkward <laughs> yes it was awkward and i was her aide <clears throat> wow yes um yes there's um i went to school with one of the guys in no doubt and <laughs> i don't know what he thinks and that's fine i'm sure i'll find out but i've waited many years to find out uh no, it was fine you know she just made me point to things and but but anyway when i said when i saw that i was like what is that and i was scared i thought it looked like a caterpillar or something you know <laughs> i didn't know what it was you know but now i get it it's it's the, it, but my mother said you should you know you know cut the skin because it's cleaner and we're clean people, right. so that's it's really all about clean for mom. She didn't ex actually explain that it was actually like a you know it's a culture thing. Right. So we're talking about what you see in the men's room when you look <laughs> down there. It's been something. I don't know. I always go to the women's room. I don't, I've never been in men's room. <laughs> I asked, like the men's room. Well, you know, I tried to ask good. him what <laughs> it was like growing up, and then we got on the topic of the restroom because of you, and then I said, "Do you ever get curious and look?" And then it, we got on <clears throat> uncircumcised. <laughs> and I don't know. I just said it looked like a puppy or a, a caterpillar. My mother was my junior high sex ed teacher. So I just went to the men's room and everything took a left turn. <laughs> yes. Well, Jason didn't want to talk about his childhood, which is fine. I just wanted to know, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I bet he was cu You were cute. See, you're very attractive. Uh, I'll talk about my childhood. It's a <laughs> uh, nice boy in Mississippi growing up. Yeah. You're hey, a southern you. boy. Did yeah. You, when you're when you play in, in a. And submersive, uh, subversive metal bands in Mississippi, people definitely look at you like you're crazy here and there. What do they want you to play, country? Like jam bands, widespread panic, stuff like that. You right. Know, like, yeah. yeah. Grateful Dead. And so, dude, 
<laughs> I went to the last Fish concert, or the one they said was the last one in Vermont. Okay. Yeah. The last one till the next one. I, exactly. Yeah, right. You that's know. That's the way it is. I, I believe I was there for a few days. I don't remember. That was very bizarre. Uh, but, see, I don't know. That seems odd to me, because every time I see guys from the South, it looks like to me that they're metalheads. But that could just be... The fact that they still have their hair feathered back. Oh, they right. got some great rock out there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just... Thank God for the South. I'd never have Jason. I mean, yeah. is it, uh, Mississippi is, you know, definitely a very misunderstood place, but there's a lot of incredible musicians down there, for so, sure. Um, oh, so, yeah. as, as a hot rock star, give <clears throat> some advice to guys who might be able to <clears throat> get the girl. A Learn to play guitar. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what everyone says. And if you could sing too. Play the guitar. Play the guitar. And if you, if you could sing too, you got an added bonus, right? What if you can't sing? Do you just put your music up louder? I don't really know. I mean, Start our, a punk in, band. In our band, they just that's don't like the drummer. That's what I'm saying. Drummer. They all like the drummer in my band, so I don't know if it matters. You guys are all cute. <laughs> well, I don't... Well, thank you. I don't understand why Eddie's, you're... Eddie's really cute. You know, he's a damn good drummer, too. But it's not all about looks. It's uh -huh. about, you know, game. Mm -hmm. I, I hate that word. I hate that damn book. That's just ridiculous. It's really... Just own who you are. If you're a geek, be the best geek you can be. If you're a stud, be the best stud you can be. Just don't be mm -hmm. stuck up, you know? If you don't want to shower every day, just, you know, try to <laughs> smell it. No, I mean, cleanliness is, is you know, it's, it's going to get you some godliness. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, saying. Not, not after just, three days on a tour bus. Yeah, you, know. you guys don't get to shower every day. Well, sometimes we don't. No. Oh, that would be awful. It depends on the scheduling and what's going on. You know, yeah. I mean, and you know, if you're a support band to a headline band. But in Europe, you know, they you don't, don't shower every day, so they don't mind. You the fit girls, right in. The girls don't mind. You guys just right. They're like, we don't care if you stink. You know, lift your armpit up. Yeah, in it America, depends we're whether like, it's summer. Don't winter. you wear deodorant? <laughs> <laughs> it depends if it's summer or winter. You know. Because it That's gets true. so cold that I don't want to shower. I don't know if that, I don't know. I don't get really get close to a lot of women when we're touring, so I don't know if they smell good or not, really, to be quite honest with I you. bet you don't even realize they're, like, sneaking around the corner or in the ladies' room going, is he going to come back in the ladies' room? He's pretty cute. Can you guys play something for me? Absolutely. I'm so excited. You guys rehearsed, mm. and I have been talking. Did we rehearse? You, no, not I don't well, remember kinda, that. <laughs> you know, we've been playing all this big electric music, so you wanted a kind of acoustic thing. Yes. We haven't sang these songs together in about eight months. Oh, we which, we, we sang them once. Whatever you want. I want to do. Um, I want to do. If you said if we can do two, I'd like to do two. We have how many minutes left? We have seven minutes. Well, we better do Miles then, because we okay. probably only get to do one. Oh, but I want to hear more. Well, we can play one for you after. Well, you guys are going to come on and do the live show. We're going to yeah, do a we'll full do rock too. show next week. But if we don't have time when we go off air, yeah. we can play the second one just for you. Oh, my God. They're going to woo me. <laughs> Which one do I choose? <clears throat> Two boys to one girl. <laughs> oh, just go ahead and play the guitar. <laughs> I love it. When you find yourself with less than your dreams And want a bit more than what you need The secret must come from the drive to succeed Seek the greenest grass upon which to feed Seems like I'm waiting for all the right things Try what I can for time to go by Over and over again I will try Got miles to go before I What you love and the money will come Trust me it's happened to more than some 
Don't think about what you can make Life's all about give and take Seems like I'm waiting for all the right things Try what I can for time to go by Over and over again I will try Got miles to go before I fly Seems like I'm waiting for all the right things Try what I can for time to go by Over and over again I will try Got miles to go miles to go before I fly got miles to go before I fly wow and to think you were going to walk away from that gift <laughs> I mean, you guys don't like chill hello chills crying like that was really sweet Let's go in the ladies' room. <laughs> Groupie. No, really, I'm, I need to be serious. First of all, uh -huh. you guys play incredibly well together, and that touched me like really great. You're incredible. No wonder why Juliet Lewis brought you on tour and wanted to eat you up in the tour bus well, thank you. <laughs> for years. Uh, <laughs> but in your voice, I mean, it's tremendous. You guys are. I love it. I can't wait to do the show live with you. I, I love the harmonies we do together. I think our voices together, you know, it's kind yeah. of Alice and Chainsy yeah, you know, but kind that, of harmonies. No, but that was that was that was like a, a number one hit song, like right now. Can we save that and play it on my show every week? Because I, I mean, <laughs> no, I, no, I'm serious. That it was amazing. I'm glad you got it. I mean, I, you know, we've probably written close to 100 songs together, or something like that by now. Well, in the so lyrics, uh, you know what? That all came from something my father told me. You know, I was yeah. really young. I was like 12 or 13. He said, "Son, just do what you love, and the money will come." And I wrote that whole song from that statement. And do you feel that? when he had said that to you when you were 12 or 13, if you would have said to him, I would like to be a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> but, <you know. clears throat> so, um, Ren Ray, uh, thank you so much, you guys. I mean, like, I'm like I'm choked glad up. You enjoyed I, it. Glad I mean, you such enjoyed an it. amazing, you guys are amazing. I can't wait. Thank you. You're going on tour. You have your new album coming out mm -hmm. um, on the 24th. It's called Children of the Drones. We right. are going to be doing a live show with them next week. So next Thursday. Yeah, full electric band. Full uh, electric band. Oh, yeah, that'll All be four much members. Dirtier. Hot guys, girls. <laughs> what was that? It'll be a lot, a, a lot louder and dirtier, more. You know, I mean, the full electric thing's totally different than what we just did. I know, but there is a sexy song on the new album, <laughs> which, by the way, I did my workout video too yesterday. I don't know somehow my body just started moving, so I went with it. You know, whatever you can do to get the workout in. But I mean, just amazing, Ben Ray. Please check out their stuff. Uh, all of your social media, please. Uh, your, you have can I so give many... a plug to my website? Please <clears throat> give your website. That's right, Ben Ray V E. E N R E Z the band dot com. Venray the band dot com. Correct. And you can also go to Heidi Selexa dot com. You can go to my Twitter at Heidi Selexa. I have all the information about them. I can tell you everything, get you whatever information you need about them. You're also doing a a, a thing where you get free tickets too. Yeah, we're doing a <clears throat> a ticket, uh, excuse me. 
giveaway for the Camden Rocks Festival in Camden in London. You know, they're 30 great British pounds a ticket, so they're kind of expensive. So we're giving away like some free tickets. 10 free tickets. Well, you got to fly to London if you want to see the show. You know? I'm going to fly to London <laughs> in the ladies' Give you an room. excuse. Right, right. Yeah, fish and chips. <laughs> <you know? laughs> I'll just make sure I have a little portable shower. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> got a shower. You guys are great. Thank you so much, Jason Thank Womack, you. and uh, we also have we have Ven Ray here, and just have to go check them out. Please check them out. Also, you guys have a show that we're going to be going to. Is it next Friday night when your album is releasing? No, actually, we we played our record release party show on February 15th. We're not. Well, gee, Heidi was a little late. Yeah, we're we're not scheduled to play in L.A. Uh, as of this moment. Um, we are leaving on May 18th, and uh, we will begin in Valladolid, Spain with Richie Ramon, and we have four shows there, and then we go on for eight or nine in uh, the United Kingdom. If you go to Venray, V-E-N-R-E-Z, the band.com, right. and check our tour schedule. Yeah, and you can just there. see their videos. You guys have uh, this new video, and you have mm-hmm. other videos. All our videos are on our website or or on YouTube. Yep, you know, just go and, you know, attach with them and be groupies cuz I'm a groupie <laughs> now, okay? I'm Heidi Selex and you are listening and watching Out of the Friend Zone. Thank you so much. See you next week as we do the live big full concert with all four members. It's going to be a loud show next Thursday night right here on UBN Radio. Hi, I'm Heidi Selex. See you next week. Heidi Selex out of the friend zone. Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. 